Hello everybody, it's Paul with Reporting Live from my sofa. How's it going today? Everything's pretty good here. Look at the weather out there. It looks like a pumpkin spice latte. I am going to be discussing day three of the Todd Mullis testimony. Y'all, this trial is one of those, you know, even though I do, uh, let's be honest, this thing's, it's boring, y'all. It's boring. Let's just be honest about it. But what we're hearing, because it's so bizarre to me, where it's almost like so cut and dry of, it, it looks like it would be so simple, but it's so complicated. So without further ado, let's review. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with the first person on the stand, Travis Hemisath. Hemisath, I'm, I'm probably butchering his last name. Uh, he was one of the investigators, sheriff, cop, whatever you want to call him. And he went out to the scene at the farm to look at the crime scene where everything was. And one of the big things on his testimony, he was up there for a while. Uh, so I'm just going to hit on some of the key points. They go over and show a whole bunch of pictures of the farm. And this is when I got a good idea of the layout of the farm and the buildings and stuff like that. And they're showing like, well, when you take a picture from here, this is the angle and the view you see from here and da, 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 da. And so that, just looking at it, I was like, you know, the red shed seems to be, for the alleged story that they're trying to come up with, of, oh, well, Todd snuck away, did this, and then came right back or whatever. I'm like, I mean, it's a little hop, skip, and a jump away. I mean, they're obviously on the same property, but it's not like, Oh, here I went out to here to here. So, you know, for the time amounts that they're trying to say this happened in, I'm not seeing that, but we'll get into that in a little bit. Now, when they talked to Travis about him interviewing Todd, uh, he says that Todd was hesitant to give his passcode to his iPad, but he gave it once his attorney said it was okay to. Now, he goes in like all the different search warrants. I think there's like 19 different search warrants, something crazy like that. And they say that the only other person of interest in this case was Jerry Frazier, the, the, the lover. Uh, but they basically ruled him out because they used essentially cell phone tower information to say, yeah, no, he was nowhere near the scene of the crime during that time. And so then they talked to his wife, because that would obviously be another person, but same type thing. You know, she checked out, so they were marked off the list. So essentially, you know, there's a very small pool of people that they're like, that it could have been, and it, all signs point to Todd. So now that, then they get, a huge part of this was getting into his Google searches. Y'all, I don't care if you haven't ever done anything wrong in your life right now, you go erase those Google searches right now. Take a break, go erase them, because it's, it's not looking good. When you see all the stuff that he had up there, because, and this is one thing I'll say. So, I like some of the stuff that he, ha that he had in there, such as the, um, what did the, about the Aztecs, or, you know, what happened to cheaters in ancient times, and stuff like this. I, I was like, at first I was like, well, what if he was watching a show, or somebody, or whoever was using the iPad, and they're like Googling that because I, I mean, I'll watch TV and Google questions as I go. And that seemed like that. But then when they started showing all the other searches, I was like, eh, yeah, <laughs> it's not good. But I also do not think that he was the only one using that iPad. So I think that some of those things definitely could be explained away. But there's, it de I'm not trying to explain all of them away because overall the evidence doesn't look good. So let's just go over a few of the things that they came up with. So, was killing a more accepted centuries ago, you know, uh, I mean, okay, let's, I, I would actually be interested to see what that comes up with now, but now I'm scared to look it up. Uh, characteristics of cheating women. Uh, he looks at lots of sites about characteristics of cheating women. Because some of this stuff, I was like, well, what if Amy was looking that up? But then the depth that he goes into with it, I'm like, no, this is probably really him looking that up. The other ones that were dead giveaways were how to make sure your kids are yours, uh, you know, test to show if you're a biological father, you know, testing DNA without the father knowing, all this kind of stuff. And so I was like, yeah, because I mean, think about it. If you're the guy, only the, the woman ever knows who the father is, really. So a lot of times, especially once cheating's involved, you know, he might be like, well, are these kids really mine? You know, that type thing. So that, that part of the evidence, I was like, yeah. 
yeah, this is, it's not a good look for him. Now, of course, the defense gets up there and they're trying to establish, like, look, anybody could use this iPad, and that's going to be a huge part of their testimony. And it's going to come up more and more, especially when Todd gets up there, and we'll talk about him in a few minutes. Uh, you know, as to the fact of anybody could look this up, how is the account set up anyways, like whose name is it under, so on and so forth. Now, the next witness that got up there was a special agent for the DCI. And what we're going to see from him is, first of all, we're going to see a, a couple of clubs, you know, of him interviewing Todd about the crime and so on and so forth. And we're going to hear his testimony about that. Now, he's going to go into more detail about establishing the alibi and getting information from Jerry, the lover. And he talks about, you know, the alibis. And he met with his wife and his son and got a search warrant for his phone and his Gmail. And, you know, he was very forthright with this and, you know, opened up all of this. And so they were like, no, he was like 45 minutes away. Now, then he goes into, you know, his questioning of Todd Mullis. He comes in and it's essentially the same story that we keep hearing that's been repeated over and over and over. And... Uh, you know, that part hasn't changed. I'll give them that. One thing that was interesting that he brings up is he says that Todd did not tell him about Amy's current affair with Jerry. Now, I remember at this point, he knows about the affair. And so he's like, you know, I, I questioned him. You know, I threw it out there. I gave him numerous chances to tell me he didn't. And he's like, I think he took a break or got some water or something. He leaves the room and lets Todd kind of think and stew on it. And when he comes back, you know, Todd's like, well, you know, uh, there is this little detail. And he tells him about it. So it's little things like that that why wouldn't you tell the detective? You know what I'm saying? Now, we're shown one clip, and it looks like, y'all, the audio, I can, these the audio clips they do with these and the surveillance are so horrible. But it goes into, to me, just showing his demeanor. Now, we're going to fast forward a little bit. When Todd gets up there later, you see his demeanor and how he talks. He has a very flat affect. I mean, he's just kind of very matter-of-fact about some things. Doesn't show emotion. To me, does that throw me off about him? No, a lot of men can be that way. And especially, you know, being emotional, things like that. That just didn't... It didn't strike me as odd with him, but I have nothing to compare it to either, you know, in the way of like with his own behavior or also being an investigator who's done this with numerous and tons of people. And it's like, no, yeah, people usually act a certain way because this, the special agent did say, you know, when he told Todd, you know, like, no, Amy was murdered and this type of thing that he just, he didn't deny it. It was basically just like, okay, you know, which is a little bit odd, but I guess too, I try to look at both sides of the fence, and I'm like, well, he has, he can't be that dumb. He has to be knowing that, especially if he did it, you know, he has to have that guilty, oh, they think I did it, or whatever. So he's probably going to try and downplay it. Or he could not have done it, and some mysterious person just showed up and killed her, and he's just kind of like, okay. Yeah, so either way, it's just bizarre. Now, another thing that I thought was interesting with him up there is when the defense brings this up about not testing Amy's uh, fingernails and essentially he's just like well no we do that if there if it's a who done it kind of case then he's like we'll do that to see but he was like all the evidence pointed to Todd in this uh, situation so we didn't test that for DNA because you know the basically what they're saying is what well, looks like there's a struggle maybe you could you know maybe she had DNA under her fingernails that would show hey this is the other person that was here or confirm that it was Todd I feel a couple of ways about this I get what he's saying which is like no we've done this hundred times there's no other people to look for you know it was Todd we're done but then I also am just like, you know what, why not go, I don't, and I don't know what it takes, maybe that takes extra time, I don't know, but why not just dot your I's and cross your T's so there's no getting out of it? Because I'll say this, if there was like, you know, if there was DNA under her fingernails from him, which some of that you would expect because they live together stuff and whatnot, but if it was like coinciding with the struggle, then it must be like, well, case closed. Let's talk about you just pleading out. You know what I mean? So I just feel like they should always dot their I's and cross their T's in that way. Now, the next witness up there was Todd's brother, uh, Mike Molas. And essentially, the biggest takeaway from his thing was he's establishing that, you know, Todd brought this iPad to work with him, that Mike, that his brother says, I have had the password everybody had the password a lot of people use that ipad because th those searches are so damning 
And they're so bizarre that it's like you have to come up with some kind of reasoning for them. So that's a huge place where the defense is going to try and establish that everybody was using this iPad. Now, another person that pulled up was like a friend of the family type situation, Michael Korgman, I believe is how you say it. And essentially, he was going and passed the scene on the road when Todd and his son and his wife's, you know, body was in the car and they met with the paramedics and he pulled over and assisted and he was basically trying to shield Tristan from seeing the situation and so that's what he did and so when all that took place you know Todd continued to the hospital he said hey look take uh, Tristan back to the farm check on the kids and so that's what he did and so he just kind of goes through the motions of what took place from there now the juicy part of the day y'all what we all gathered around our phone screens to hear about is Todd Mullis himself I I had, to, I had to text a couple of people. You always know when the defendant gets up there, it's going to be good. And at the time of this filming, he is probably being cross-examined by the state. So let's just let's jump into a couple of things. First of all, he talks about owning the property. Now, I was under the impression somehow that Amy did, but it sounds like they bought property and things like that. So maybe that's how that got all mixed in with one another. Uh, but, you know, he says that he owned the property when they got married. And he talks about, like, after the discovery of the first affair that, you know, they wanted to work things out. He said that Amy went wanted to stay married you know she wanted to get rid of the 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 side guy uh they got a counselor that basically told them to be really open really transparent and like for amy to basically be like you know okay well i'm running into town and then to call okay well i'm headed back and just that kind of thing to reestablish that trust and uh, before we go further into his stuff this is the thing about that i found with todd on the stand todd is very easygoing he's very matter of fact he's very laid back and we don't, I mean, I don't know. I don't know him personally. I don't know if it's an act. I don't know if, what it is. Because you hear from all these people that are so afraid of him. And then this really chill kind of farmer dude gets up there that seemingly says all the right things. And now, mind you, he's had a year to think of this stuff and whatnot. And it could be the performance of his life. But that being said, I'm just like, oh, if you watched him isolated without all this other evidence, I could see somebody being like, I just can't imagine him doing this. You know, so looks and whatnot can be deceiving a lot of times. So that being said, you know, because as you go through this testimony, you're kind of like, well, yeah, it's making sense what he said. Because he does sound like he wanted to give Amy every chance in the world and this and that, you know, but... I mean, the evidence kind of shows differently. So for everything, he ha almost has like an excuse for it or a reasonable reason. So for example, he says that it was Amy's idea to tell him where she was at and what she was doing. Like she came up with that. Now, after the first fear, Amy's the one who said that she wanted to stay home and you know, be around him more and the kids and be a housewife. And that's kind of what she wanted to do. So he built another hog barn or whatever you call it uh, to try and make some more money so that she could stay home, be a stay at home mom. Now, at one point, you know, time goes on he finds this communication between jerry and the wife and he confronts jerry jerry denies it confronts the wife she denies it and essentially he comes back a couple of days later and he's like you know i apologized and you know i hope i didn't cause any issues between y'all and this that and the other and so on and so forth and even in all this he says that he continued working with jerry like jerry you know came to the farm and did some manage the farm or something and so jerry would come to the farm and still work with them and it was you know no animosity from either side and so on and so forth with that i mean it just sounded like okay so what's you know where's the issue he talks about the time about you know amy saying about the thing about the affairs and like hey there's some rumors going around i just want you to know this how they talked about it and you know, again, he doesn't seem like he got upset in the whole nine yards. Now, when it comes to those Google searches and stuff, he's like, yeah, I didn't do those. And I just want to say this, and so drop it like it's hot in the comment sections if you know what I'm talking about. I've seen people in other chat rooms and stuff talking about the UTC, like, time translation or whatever, and it wasn't correct, and that, oh, no, the, the something to that flavor. If you know anything about that, those key words should ring a bell because people are saying, like, no, it's not wrong because there is something weird with the times where the defense is like, did you look this up at 3 in the morning? And basically I'm seeing people in the comment sections more than one say, well, no, they haven't translated this timing code or whatever properly and so that's why it's off and so i'm just curious if any of y'all know anything about that just drop it down there 
So, you know, the day ends out with, of course, the defense testimony asking, you know, did you kill Amy? But he's way more, gra not gra well, graphic, but dramatic, you know. Did you butcher her with this corn fork and all this stuff? And, of course, he's, you know, going to say no. What's he going to say? Surprise! Yep, I did it. Fooled all y'all. Let's change my play. You know, it's just not going to happen that way. So, uh, but that's it. So, like I said, today where the state crosses him is going to be very eye-opening to see how he does under that. Uh, so, I appreciate y'all hanging out with me. Now, we are going to be dropping a new podcast on this. And also, we're going to be, the podcast will be here on YouTube, like the video version of it, as well as on the usual places that you hear us from uh, where you hear your other favorite podcast Stitcher, Apple, uh, Anchor, Google, all those. So be sure and check that out. If you're listening on Apple, give us a review so we know what to do and how to make it better. And I appreciate y'all hanging out with me. Thank you very much. Check out the description for more links. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye.